Okay, so this time we're gonna talk about tapering tangs, why we do them, how we do them, and just the overall process and a few tips and tricks to get it, like get it right, make sure it's a little bit easier. So what is a tapered tang? The tang is this part right here that goes under the handle. We do, we do a tapered tang on a full tang blade, meaning you can see the tang around the perimeter of the handle. First reason why you do a tapered tang is weight and balance. So oftentimes when you do a full tang handle, it's gonna be really heavy back here and you don't want that. You wanna remove as much weight as possible back here. Or that's just to push the weight further towards the middle of the blade where you're gonna be holding it. The second reason why we do the tapered tang is because like we talked about in the last video, warp. So most blades that I do, they're gonna be slightly warped one way or the other. And so if it's not that bad, like this blade was a little bit warped, it's, it was warped a little bit like this. Basically you can end up and push the tang to one side and you can end up with a straight blade from the full thickness um, where it was originally warped. So if you have a blade that's been slightly warped just a little bit, you can account for that by grinding off more on one side of the tang than others. So you're basically pushing the tang to, to whatever side where it's gonna actually straighten out the center line of the blade. And then the last part are looks. Looks are a very important part of the knives that we do. And it's not just the side profile that we're looking at. We look at kind of every angle. So if you're looking here, you want a nice distal taper on the blade, but you also want a nice tapered tang so that it doesn't look so one dimensional and like fat and bulky back here. So one, weight and balance. Two is warp. And then three is looks. So in the last video, when we were talking about grinding knives, we did the 45 degree bevels to kind of establish where the center line of the blade was and where the tapers are gonna go. We wanna make sure that the 45s are pretty much dead on so that the butt of the handle, the center of this ricasso area and the very tip of the knife are all in line and centered. Once we get the 45s done, we'll have a straight reference and then we also have a visual reference on how much to take off. We grind until those 45s are gone. Next after that is we actually hollow grind the tang right here. So this has been done a little bit already. You can see it's been hollow grind in the middle. We'll hollow grind this as much as we can, take off a lot of material. And then when we go to flat grind it on the platen, there's gonna be less surface area in contact. So that, so not only is hollow grinding faster, it makes the flat grinding faster afterwards because there's less surface area in contact. A lot of the hollow grinding is still gonna be there even after you taper the tang, so it's gonna reduce the weight even further. And it also helps with epoxy adhesion because there's gonna be a little pocket right there and a good, uh, good surface for the epoxy to grab onto. More surface area. Yeah, more surface area. After the hollow grind, we bring it to the flat platen with the work wrist, and we're gonna grind off as much as we can to make it a flat surface, but it's not gonna be perfect. So we're just doing that as another step to take off more material faster. And then last, we're gonna hold this with a strong magnet and press it on the flat platen, on the diagonal or the lengthwise so that we can get it as flat as we can. Even doing the, the magnet vertically is not gonna be perfectly, um, perfectly flat just because of the nature of the belt grinder. This is never gonna give you a very flat surface. So we're gonna finish on the disc grinder, which is much flatter. And if you don't have a disc grinder, you can get like a diamond, like a coarse diamond sharpening plate and you can finish on there. It's gonna be a little bit slower, but it's gonna give you a much flatter surface, which is gonna be better for the fit and finish, the looks, the handle getting adhered to the tang. And then that's it for tapering tangs. It's, it's pretty simple. It's a lot more straightforward than actually grinding the blade. Once you've learned how to grind the blade, like the taper tang is pretty straightforward. It's just a preference thing if you want to do it or not, but those are some of the main steps that we go through to make this easier. If you just take a magnet and ram it in there, you could eventually get to a taper tang, but you're probably gonna encounter like warp, it's gonna heat up on you. It's just not pretty. So if you follow these steps, it's gonna make it a lot easier. It's gonna make it more straightforward and there's just less guesswork and it's gonna be quicker. We've shown a little bit of the tapering process. This is one that we've already done already. This is a, just a Nakiri. You can see the Rikasa is pretty thick. 
It's still around like one eighth inch right here. There's a nice distal taper towards this tip, really thin right here. And then down towards the tang, it tapers to about the same. So this is, I'm gonna guess like 60 or 70 thousandths thick right here. So it's going from about 120 thou to 60 thou, like half that. Overall, it's much lighter in the tang. When you put the handle on there, it's gonna be more balanced, but it looks good to me. Like there's a nice visual flow with all of this. It doesn't look clunky and everything's straight. So before the end of this video, I just wanna mention that I've officially started my Patreon. I don't like ads, I don't like seeing them, and I don't want them in my videos. We're gonna keep making videos, but it's a lot of work between me and Sam, and now we're getting my friend Jackie to help edit. This is something that I really enjoy doing, and I wanna keep showing the process and doing tutorials and stuff like that. For the Patreon, we're starting a Discord for people to chat in, and I'll be doing extra videos like monthly Q&As, uncut videos, and just miscellaneous things like that. If you like our stuff and you want to help out a little bit, we would be eternally grateful. But you definitely don't have to make any commitments or be pressured to make any financial contributions, um, just only if you want to. So, thank you. <laughs>